So hello, uh, thank you for uh, coming in my talk about uh, understanding PHP memory. Uh, I think it's uh, quite in interesting for uh, everybody to know uh, how PHP mana manages memory. We'll also talk about uh, kernel and uh, stuff like that. It's a little bit uh, technical. Uh, technical. So. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm uh, Julian Poli. I'm French, bonjour, from Paris. <laughs> uh, I've been using PHP since about 10 years. I'm now reviewing internals of uh, PHP since about uh, three years. I'm a release manager for the next release, 5.5, which should come uh, stable in something like March. See, uh, I'm working at uh, BlaBlaCar in Paris, and you can find my contact on uh, on this sheet. You have uh, the slides uh, at the end of the talk. Okay. So I'm working at uh, BlaBlaCar. Very quickly, this is just a car sharing system. Okay, you have uh, drivers, you have passengers, and you make the road all together. It's very very interesting. We have a. Uh, PHP 5.3, yes, it's not 5.4 yet, it's going to be this year. And uh, we use lots of um, open source softwares. Uh, everything <coughs> is, uh, is open source, it's very, very interesting. Okay, so about you, um, you should have uh, experience with PHP programming, right? Everybody, I think. And you have some. Uh, Unix, uh, Linux understandings, just basically how it works. And uh, it would be good to have some uh, C experience. We won't have a C code, but uh, it's going to be a little bit hard at some part, lower. Perhaps we have a hardware programmers here. No, nobody. Yeah, yes, cool. <laughs> very, very interesting. Okay. So, uh, what we'll see together in this talk is uh, just first recall everybody what memory is in a computer system, okay? Then how to measure the memory con consumption of a process and then of PHP. Understanding how PHP manages memory. So when you write code, PHP allocates, then frees memory. How does it do like, uh, things like this? We we'll talk about the component which is responsible for that, send memory manager, and then uh, how to measure PHP memory, okay, in your uh, everyday script. So it's going to be a little bit uh, cool, I think. So what uh, memory is? So from a hardware point of view, you know memory like this. From a software point of view, you know perhaps memory like this. This is memory. This is just ones and zeros and have millions uh, of those. Uh, in, in Linux, that's the same for Windows, but that's a little bit different. So it will be Linux covered only this talk. In Linux, um, any process can allocate the whole memory in the machine, okay? So if you have, uh, say, a laptop with uh, two gigabytes uh, memory, uh, each process I launch uh, is able to allocate those two gigabytes memory. But uh, if there are two processes to allocate two gigabytes and I have only two gigabytes, there will be a problem, okay? So uh, the kernel, is going to start swapping. So you have to make the difference between what is virtual memory and what is physical memory. Physical memory is the memory inside my machine. And virtual memory is a projection to my process of what the physical memory is. So if you have only uh, two gigabytes of memory on your machine, uh, each process doesn't allocate directly this memory. It will go through uh, something called uh, a page table in the Linux kernel. So when you allocate some memory in a process A and then a process B allocates some memory, 
the kernels behind will map this memory in different layers in the physical memory. Okay, it's a very, very interesting job and you can see it, you can uh, uh, see how it works just by opening the kernel source. Okay, it's not very hard, it can be very, very difficult to understand, but uh, it's not really, really hard to understand how it works. Okay, so uh, the point is virtual memory and physical memory. They are not memory, they are not the same. Any process just sees virtual memory. In a process, in use of mode, you cannot allocate physical memory directly. Kernel can, but you cannot in use of mode. So when you allocate memory, it's only virtual memory. Then when you allocate memory, the virtual memory, so all the gigabytes available, uh, is divided into segments, okay? And what segments will interest us in this talk are heap and stack, because those two segments are able to grow while the process is running. So a process is able to eat more and more and more and more memory. I'm meaning by this, the process is able to ask the kernel to page in physical memory into the virtual memory of this process more and more and more. Okay, until it dies because it has no more memory. So what's interesting is stack and heap, any process have a stack and a heap uh, in Linux, okay? And PHP is just a process. So we'll see how PHP manages stack and how PHP manages heap into memory. And then how we, we can uh, play with that from a PHP user land, so how we can uh, make PHP allocate of free memory uh, at any time. So, Memory usage can grow, okay? And uh, when you talk about stack, the stack grows automatically when you call a function in C, I'm talking about. So the more function you call and you stack them, uh, the more the stack will grow until it exceeds its size, so the size you can touch it uh, in a CTL uh, configuration on your kernel or using U limit if you know it. Uh, it depends, the size depends on the kernel version, etc. So you have no, you cannot really play with the stack from a programmer land, but you can play with the heap. The heap is just uh, a part in the memory and you can allocate memory in it and free memory in it, okay? So using, when you, you use C language, you use usually uh, malloc and uh, free, which are uh, C library calls to allocate and free memory, okay? So if the programmer uh, allocates too many memory, you will have a problem. And if the, mo the programmer uh, allocates memory and forgets to free it, you will have a problem uh, through time because you will leak memory. Leaking memory is just allocating memory and never freeing it. Okay, it's very easy to do. You can do this with just one call, malloc, and that's all. Have a question for the talk? Yes? Yeah. Memory leak or virtual memory leak? The, uh, yeah. This is... <laughs> This is a good question. This is virtual memory leak. We'll see that in kernel nowadays uh, the memory won't be physically paged in until you really use the pointer. This is delayed. So you can unlock two gigabyte of memory. The kernel won't page it in until you use the blocks. Okay? But when you allocate memory, you will use the blocks. When, I don't know, but uh, you will use them. So it's important to allocate and to free the memory. So how do we monitor memory usage under Linux? Under Linux, you can use the, the slash proc file system. 
and you can call slash prox slash process PID slash status to have something like that, which is very interesting. I won't detail all the uh, all the items you have here, but you have on this process, don't know what it is, you have a virtual memory size allocated of 20 megabytes out of the total memory, okay? And the resident state size is uh, 300 kilobytes. This is the physical memory that is actually paged in your process memory map. This is how many memory is used by this process into physical RAM. Okay? Even if I allocate 20 megabytes, actually the kernel is paging in only 300 kilobytes uh, in physical memory. So you have the size of the stack, you have the size of the data segment, and what is uh, executable is the size of the text segment. Text segment is just the machine instruction the CPU is, is running. This is a read-only segment, you cannot write in it, okay? So this is some details, quite interesting. <coughs> when the process dies, the links disappears. Okay, this is slash proc. I think uh, everybody knows slash proc. Uh, those numbers are real, they are true, they are, at least when you have no bugs in your kernel, they are real and they really tell you, the kernel, the, uh, the brain of your software really tells you how many memory it is actually using for each process. So trust it, okay, trust it. And be careful with those functions which will show you, don't know what it will show you. We'll see later what it, will, it shows you. But uh, when I want to know the memory usage of a process, usually I ask for my kernel because uh, it's the component which is responsible for allocating memory to my process. So it's uh, very, uh, very useful to ask the kernel, okay? Uh, Every time you have a tool telling you how many memory uh, something uses, uh, wonder if you really trust this tool or at least show me the source. That way I can see the system calls and the kernel calls in it and I can, uh, I can know what kind of memory it is representing, so those numbers. Uh, you have another command which is interesting, it's called pmap. It shows you the projection of the virtual memory segments of a process, okay? Use uh, X modifier, it's better because you have resident state size with it. So on this process, you can see you have different memory segments you have read-only segments. This is the code which is executed by the CPU. It is read-only. And you have read-write segments, which are usually the heap, the stack. You can read and you can write, okay? And uh, executable is the code which is executed. So we can see here on this process different segments and the libraries which has been responsible for allocating memory in those segments, okay? Because when you link uh, process with uh, other libraries, those libraries would be able to allocate memory as well, okay? So you have the detail with the pmap command. It's quite interesting and you can, you have an even deeper command which will give you uh, information about each segment, and this command is in slash proc smaps, and smaps will zoom on each segment telling you if it's shared memory or private memory. And this is really important because when you have two processes that use the same libraries, they have both a virtual memory that tells uh, the shared library 
is using actually something like 20 megabytes here and 20 megabytes here. So you, you are tricked because you think you are totally using 40 megabytes and that's wrong because the virtual memory behind is paged in, uh, in the same physical memory segment. So don't trust too much the virtual memory, uh, at least. You can show in uh, S maps, and it's not really, really clear as well. You can show, uh, you can see if the segment is a shared segment, and you can see how many memory has been allocated from another process or from this process. This is called private or shared, and I won't tell you <laughs> the other, the other uh, items you can see here, the other information you should read. Uh, some kernel book to understand them because that's quite uh, important and uh, very very can be very hard so you can have uh, you have another tool this is called uh, smaps which can show you how many memory a process well it's very big okay so this is just one segment out of i go back one slide out of all those segments and this is just a program I wrote for this. It's a three or four lines program. PHP is a one million C line program. So when you map the memory of PHP, you have to wait and you have to have the good tools to select the segments because you have lots, 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 lots of information. Same for Firefox or any very huge process. You know, it's, uh, it's big. So, we are going even deeper with S-Maps, or oh, there is a very, very cool project I use uh, very often, not every day, but very often. This is uh, Volgrind, for those who know. Who knows Volgrind? Just, yes, okay, it's cool. It's, uh, it's a multi-tool, but uh, it can be used to monitor the memory usage and the memory leaking in your programs. This is only showing the virtual memory and not the physical one. Okay, you cannot handle the physical memory if you're not in the kernel code. That's all. So it's a virtual memory. Let's have a break. Okay, <laughs> it's um, interesting, but uh, it's a little bit uh, complex now. <clears throat> what uh, what can we say about PHP when we just said all, uh, all we said uh, before? Uh, PHP is just a process like any others we just saw, okay? So you can use the tools I showed you before to monitor PHP memory. For example, you can tell PHP to cut uh, to gather information from PROC its own PID status and see, for example, uh, what the kernel tells PHP about itself in its self memory. Okay, it can be interesting. You can grab uh, RSS, data, stack, and every, everything we, we saw before. Uh, it can be, it can be inter interesting to see uh, to see that. Inside PHP, so PHP is a C program, okay? So PHP uses a stack, uses a heap, and when it uses a heap, it calls uh, the C library functions malloc and free to allocate blocks and to free them, okay? Uh, this is not really true, I mean, there is a component in the source code that is responsible for managing malloc and free. It's called Zen Memory Manager. I think everybody has ever seen this in PHP information. Okay, what is Zen Memory Manager? This is uh, a, a code stack that steps onto uh, malloc, which itself steps onto kernel itself stepping onto the physical memory. And when you have a PHP script, it should not, I'm using the should verb because we'll see it's not, uh, it's not the case uh, uh, every time, it should not call 
malloc directly, it should call functions in the memory manager, which will eventually call malloc or not uh, for allocating memory. Send memory manager is a layer which is responsible uh, of allocating and freeing memory from the, the C library and it uses uh, very cool things to cache blocks or to pre-allocate blocks of fixed size we use in the engine like set volts, Z volts for vi PHP variables, okay? So it pre-allocates uh, some memory. When you would have called free in C and you call the send free function, it does not call free every time. It keeps blocks cached and it arranges the blocks away. Uh, the future allocation will be uh, more speedy. Okay, and it is memory leaks debugging when you develop extensions. Okay, or when you develop into PHP source code, it is uh, a memory leaks de detection. It's uh, very cool for that. So, let's see something interesting. Uh, the same function you have seen in the slides before. Okay, I'm just calling it. Then I'm stressing the memory by allocating a very, very, very huge array. Arrays are hash tables for those who know. This is something that will take a little bit of time to execute, okay? Because the, CP the CPU will have very much work to do. Then I call my function to see how many memory that will eat. Then I unset, then I stress back the engine by freeing the memory. And then I show, I show you uh, how much the heap function we call using send memory manager and not using send memory manager. To disable Zen memory manager, you can use uh, an environment uh, global, which is called use send alloc. Okay, uh, in the default, it's it's one, it's enabled. Okay, but you can disable it in a case by case, uh, just using this uh, this global uh, variable in your shell, it's an uh, uh, environment variable. So you can see that using send memory manager, we have a little bit more memory which is allocated by the kernel in the process, but it uses, uh, when it frees the memory, the memory is directly freed to the back to the kernel. It's not the case when you don't use it, this is, quite complex, this is because free in C is actually doing the same work as uh, Zen Memory Manager. It keeps the memory uh, heat um, in the process map uh, to, to give it back later. But uh, I call time and we can see in time that when we use Zen Memory Manager, we have some systems or kernel time, okay? The CPU is in ring zero mode. This is quite uh, heavy for it which is uh, less, and the global time is less when you use Send Memory Manager. Okay? Uh, let's do the same thing, but calling Volgrind. Volgrind will just tell me how many uh, malloc and free has been called, and how many bytes have been asked for. Using Send Memory Manager, we can see that this program uses what well, calls for uh, memory about 164 uh, megabytes using send memory manager. If you don't use it, you call less memory. This is uh, normal behavior. We'll explain later why. But you can see that you have. Uh, many, 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 many times more call to malloc and free than when you use send memory manager because send memory manager will pre-allocate blocks using malloc far less times 
every time you use malloc or free, uh, this is time time consuming, okay? Because uh, usually it will call uh, for the kernel to uh, um, to enlarge the the heap size, and this is uh, this is something which is uh, not very good for your CPU and your your process about uh, performance. So you can see in the in the time. It's better to have a, a Zen memory manager. Uh, if you run the benchmark or the micro benchmark from the Zen source, same, using for grind with Zen alloc and without uh, Zen alloc, so using Zen memory manager or not, you see that when you use Zen memory manager, you have uh, a number of calls about malloc and free, and when you don't use it, it's far, far, far more, okay? So it's, uh, it's very bad. Uh, Zen Memory Manager is just a layer. You have the same layer in, in a lot of process. Uh, for those who looked at the Firefox Memory Manager, which is quite interesting, and the one used by the JavaScript engine, it's the same trick used inside, okay? but for another process, the, this case is uh, Firefox, and we talk about uh, PHP. It's the same uh, with all the uh, all the process that are heavy with the with the memory. You have you always have to develop a layer over malloc and free, and that can be very very tricky. It took about one or two years to to develop the memory manager uh, ten ten years ago. So uh, Zen memory manager is is a layer. Uh, this layer will pre-allocate blocks, so it can use more memory than not using it, but it will, uh, it will stress far less uh, the kernel than just using malloc and free. So it's better to, to use uh, Zen Memory Manager to leave it enabled, okay? Uh, at least until you have uh, very specific cases. Finally, Zen Memory Manager adds uh, into PHP two functions you should know, memory gate usage, memory gate pick usage. It adds a uh, concept you should know as well, which is called uh, memory limit. And finally, it adds something you should really, really know, this. This is Zen Memory Manager, okay? Uh, every time P PHP allocates blocks, Zen Memory Manager just counts the blocks, and when it exceeds a memory limit size, it goes in fatal error. And I think you know this uh, this error very much. It's quite uh, funny. So how does it work? Uh, I won't go very deep because. Uh, it's just C code and doubly linked lists and pointers over pointers over pointers over pointers with a five, four, three stars. Uh, it uses segments. Okay, so this is interesting. When PHP allocates memory, the Zen Memory Manager, when PHP asks for 10 bytes, the Zen Memory Manager will allocate by default 256 kilobytes. This is called a segment. And into this segment, it will uh, sh shrink it and uh, try to give the up layer the blocks it asked for. Okay, so you have segments. And those segments, when uh, it's not enough, it allocates another segment and it shrinks it into blocks. So you have on this picture, the Zen Memory Manager allocated three segments. This is a different size, you can change it. I will show you how to do later, okay? So in this process, in this PHP process, the Zen Memory Manager allocated three segments, divided the segments in blocks, and the blocks actually are filling the memory with used data at here. It's just a picture, okay? And this is a heap. So next time I ask for memory, it won't call malloc because it goes, got some 
free memory here, pre-allocated. It will give it to PHP until it reaches the end. Then it will call for malloc and a new segment, <coughs> etc. Okay? So, what, what does memory get usage? Memory get usage true. This is called real usage. And memory get peak usage gives to you. This is important to know. Okay. With the picture, it's better. So, going back, when you call memory get usage, you are asking the Zen memory manager to tell you how many bytes the blocks allocated in the pre-allocated segments use memory. And when you call memory gets usage true, this is called real memory, this is how many segments have been allocated. So this is how many memory has been asked to malloc. Okay? This is the process heap size. And this is what is used in it, okay? It's, it's a difference uh, which is not very, very well explained on the documentation, but uh, explaining it, it's uh, quite, uh, quite hard. Then you have a free memory, okay? So then you will allocate, 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 and then it will allocate a new segment, and one, two, three, four, on the fifth one, it will jump in a fatal error because our memory limit is somewhere over there, so it will, uh, it will tell you a fatal error about uh, memory limit exceed. So memory get usage tells you how much your allocated blocks consume, but be careful, the data sh could not be paged in, it depends uh, on the kernel implementation, and what is tricky about memory gate usage, it doesn't count stack at all. So when memory gate usage tells you something like, I'm using 10 megabyte of memory, yes, only for the heap I allocated on malloc, not counting about what the kernel has done of that memory. Is it paged in or out? Is it in the swap space? You don't know, okay? For accuracy, you need to grind the process and you have a tool uh, called the Massive with grind, which is something very, very interesting, which will tell you each internal function in PHP, how many bytes it allocates on the malloc heap. So it's very interesting. It goes like something like that and you have the peak and uh, it's, uh, you, should, uh, you should try it if you don't know it. And it doesn't count link libraries, okay? link libraries, no extension, okay? Because you have, a, in PHP, you have a extensions, and uh, if the extension writer um, has not used the Zen memory manager layer, but uses the malloc layer, it short circuits all the data, and you won't see that in the memory gate usage. Okay, I have no ideas, but I know that the engine itself doesn't always use Zen Memory Manager. So when it tells you in memory get usage, it uses 10 megabytes, for example, you can bet it uses more than that. Okay, but to know, you have to use the tools uh, I showed you in the first slide. So. Uh, Send memory manager and memory gets usage. It's a good, uh, it's a good indicator, okay, to follow. But don't really trust that uh, at the byte limit, okay? It's not, uh, it's not very accurate about that. <coughs> so, if I want to reduce the memory PHP is actually using, I have to know uh, what in PHP, in a PHP script, what consumes uh, memory, okay? So memory is mainly consumed by variables, okay? Dollar something, dollar A, dollar B, dollar C, okay? Every time you use a variable, you will allocate memory for it. And uh, when the data in the variable is not needed anymore, PHP will free the memory, okay? Should you know when it will free it? 
it's not very, very uh, easy to, to compute. So I prepared some slides to know, to know it, this. So in PHP, you should know, I think nowadays, that uh, variables are um, allocated in, uh, are represented in a structure, a C structure, which is called a C fold. Okay, and you should know things. This is garbage collector. Okay, you should know this. Um, and the value inside the C vol is a C value value. Okay, so you have uh, this structure plus plus uh, this structure in it. Okay, here. So when you allocate dollar uh, r equals one you will allocate a C4, you will allocate a C4 value, and in the C4 value, you will use a long field because $A equals 1, 1 is an integer. Integer are represented on the long value here, and the other fields are not used, but they are allocated with the, with the, the value itself. So the value is used to the integers, PHP floats, PHP strings, PHP arrays, and PHP objects. Resources, it's something a little bit different. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but uh, we won't talk about it uh, now, okay? So this is allocated. This is not very, very, heavy. Should you remember your types weight in C, in Unix LP64, a long is 8 bytes, a string is the size of allocated into the, the car star, the pointer, okay, plus its length, which is an integer, okay, an integer is only 4 bytes, a double is 8 bytes, and Every pointer you see is 8 bytes as well. So this is not very heavy. Okay, you can allocate millions of millions of C4. Uh, it's not a problem. What will be a problem is what is inside, what is behind. When it's a long, okay, no problem, 8 bytes. When it's a double, okay, no problem, 8 bytes as well. But when it's a string, it's a pointer to an allocated uh, area in the heap, which is the size of the string. So if you have a very huge string, you will consume very, very much memory. It's the same for the arrays and the objects, which are very complex, you know, with lots of dimensions inside, or recursive uh, structures. It's not very good for memory as well. So what eats memory is what is stored into the C vol, not really the T vol. So this is dollar $A is a C fold with a value, and the value is a pointer to a character string buffer, which is one kilobyte allocated, plus the C fold size, plus the same value size. So it's something like uh, 1,000, uh, it should be perhaps 100, I don't have, I think it's 80, uh, a C4 is 80, something like that. So it's not very, very uh, heavy, but a huge, a huge string is something like we can see uh, in everyday programming. Sometimes I can see some file get contents of a very huge file. Yes, it should blow memory up, okay? Uh, a complex array, a complex object, or sometimes it's more tricky, but uh, uh, a new DOM document of a big document, okay? It allocates memory for parsing the, the whole document in one time. So it's, uh, it's very memory consuming. So you want to avoid is make PHP dupli duplicate the C4, okay? So now we will see how PHP manages memory when you, when you copy variables, when you pass to functions, uh, etc. This, uh, this is important because when you know how PHP does to copy or not, 
uh, uh, the memory so you can be more efficient in your everyday uh, programming. So this is where uh, the ref count comes. You should know this. I think you heard about that uh, in, your, in your PHP programmer life. Um, when you don't use references, okay, PHP simply counts how many symbols, PHP variables, point to a symbol. So when you have $A equals foo, you allocate something like three bytes. It's not really three bytes because you have the, the end uh, backslash uh, uh, O and uh, you have a default structure as well. And when you copy it to B, you see that PHP, this is the default, okay? Those are the symbols. You see that both symbols point on the same default. So PHP allocates memory only for one string foo, even if you have two variables pointing to it. Okay, so here, PHP will not duplicate the memory, right? So, it will duplicate the memory when you change the value. This is known copy or on write. You should know this, I think. So, when you have uh, $A equals foo, okay? So, you have one variable pointing to this memory uh, to this memory hole, okay? Then you make B point to it, and then when you change A, so B is pointing on the old uh, C fold, which ref count has been decremented by one because A is not equals to B anymore, and you allocate a new C fold, which has the size of an integer, okay, which is here, 17. This is the copy and write system. So PHP is very, uh, very clever at uh, uh, not using uh, much memory. Uh, PHP will free memory for a C4 when the ref count reaches zero. This is something very logical. Should you know that uh, your kernel uses the same trick for lots and lots of structures in things called slab allocators or slab allocators. It's very interesting. Ref count system, it's very easy by itself, okay? So when you use unset, you just uh, decrease the ref count by one, okay? So if it does not reach zero, unset will not free some memory. This is important. Here, it uses unset $A, okay, but $A is the only uh, variable uh, pointing to foo. It just, you, you, you see on the, on the screen, you have foo allocated, you have B, which is now uh, allocated for a string bar, and when you unset A, you just unlink this reference, but C is still pointing to foo, so unset won't free foo because C is still pointing to it, okay? So don't, uh, don't think about unset, okay, give me back some memory. No, it depends how many variables are still pointing uh, on the true data in memory, the C4. So you see that PHP is really smart about this. You should not use references to try to trick uh, or to hint the engine because uh, uh, sometimes it can lead to bad behaviors and when you use references, uh, sometimes you do the adverse effect, so you force the engine to duplicate memory because it sees uh, a reference or you prevent the engine from freeing memory, okay? So it's, uh, uh, don't use uh, references uh, everywhere, only use references when you really, really need them. It should be very rare, it should not be a, a two-day programming, okay? We just use variables, uh, normal variables, and uh, PHP manages memory uh, uh, the much, uh, much uh, very good way, so you don't have to, to think about that and try to hint PHP you, you want uh, 
you won't make it. So to monitor memory usage in PHP, you can use memory gets usage, okay? You can use the operating system like we saw uh, at the beginning of the slides. And you have some extensions which are quite interesting. You know Xdebug, okay? So I won't tell you about Xdebug. You have uh, other extensions which are interesting. Uh, memprof and memtrack. Unfortunately, memtrack doesn't compile under 5.4 anymore because we changed uh, the engine structure and doesn't compile anymore. It just needs a quick patch. And you have something called uh, memprof, uh, which is uh, quite new. It's uh, from uh, uh, Arnaud Leblanc, which is a PHP contributor. And uh, this is uh, an example of uh, memprof using. So memprof is just one function. It says dump me the memory usage of PHP to a file and then I can use that file with something like dot or kkh grind, you should know. Okay, it's the same as a, a xdebug trace, so we, but it's for memory, memory usage, okay? So here is something interesting. I have a function foo, a function loader, which does a require, okay? This is to show you that the PHP code that is passed allocates memory and never frees it. So when you use huge frameworks with huge PHP source code, it will use huge memory because all this source code um, uh, has to be passed and uh, compiled and turned into opcode and the opcode gets executed but it's still in memory so when you use a framework with thousands of files it's tens of megabytes that are burnt by the engine and allocated by the process uh, just to parse your file even if you don't execute it just requiring a file it's allocating lots of memory if you have lots of lines of code in the file. So this is to show you. Uh, allocate a lot of memory. In this array at the next uh, index in the array called foo, and foo allocates a string of eight megabytes, allocates an object, just to see how many that can <coughs> consume and uh, adds the string into the object and returns the object. And then call loader on something called send date. So it's the old class from the send framework one, which is known as being very heavy. It's thousands and thousands of lines of code. And you will see that it consumes even not executing the send date code. It consumes lots of memory. Okay, because itself requires other files, requiring other files, requiring other files, and just requiring that file, it allocates a huge amount, amount of memory. So when you use memprof dump call grind, you have something like that, and this is memory usage. Okay, so you can see that loading send date, it's nearly three megabytes allocated. And I never execute anything in the send date class. Okay, I just tell PHP, open it, pass it, and get ready to execute it if I use the then type object. I don't use it, but we are on a first pass compiler and we are on a, an a executed language, so it cannot guess in the future that I won't use the object to free the memory, it just allocates, it, it keeps it. This is an improvement we should uh, add, but it's not, uh, it's not very, uh, very easy to do. So you can see here that my main consumed about 130 megabytes, which are just shown uh, in an xdebug way. Okay, eight megabytes for foo, 100 megabytes for range. So you see it's very, very, very huge. Okay, well, it's a very huge array as well. <laughs> and uh, the loader uh, function just consumed about three megabytes. Um, 
this is interesting. I used it in, we used Symfony 2 and we found tricky things in Symfony 2. It's, uh, uh, it's a professional, very good framework, but uh, from a performance and a memory point of view, it could be improved. And it could be improved very much on components such as the YAML parser, which should be written in C and not in PHP, and uh, etc. You have a composer autoloader. Uh, this is no normal because when uh, every class you pass comes back to the autoloader to pass it and requ require it. So in a Symfony 2 memory map, the most important memory consumption is composer autoload. Okay. So I autoload lots of classes, but how many code do I use? Do I really execute? Do I really need? It's generally very, very little, okay? So it's not very, very um, bad because we have a, a big, big, big machines. We have a, a 128 gigabyte uh, machines at uh, my work, so it's okay, but uh, something... Uh, you should uh, think about. So to conclude, everything consumes memory, okay? In real world cases, all heavy classes, so frameworks, frameworks consume more memory, so, okay? Uh, heavy complex structures, the same, uh, when you see the Symfony dependency injection container, uh, it's something with uh, circular references, etc. It's not, uh, it could, could be optimized, but uh, it's very hard to compute where. Uh, heavy results, important, I have another talk, but uh, not this, uh, this day, uh, not uh, tomorrow, about uh, how does PHP allocate memory for MySQL uh, results? and they have lots of things to tell about that. So when you use the store mode, the store fetch mode in MySQLi, uh, PHP allocates memory for the whole result set, even if you just pass for each the three or four first results, it has allocated lots of memory, so it's, uh, it's not very, very nice as well, and heavy XML. So uh, don't try to optimize memory where you don't know if it's uh, the good place, okay? So try uh, first to benchmark to find uh, the bottlenecks in terms of memory and uh, know what you say, know what a uh, garbage collector is, know what APC is. APC has nothing to do with memory consumption reduction, it's the opposite. It allocates a shared segments using the MMAP call, and you can uh, you can tell it how many memory it should allocate in the shared memory segment in a, in a APC dot INI or PHP dot INI. So using APC, it's just about uh, it's just about saving CPU, not memory. It's the opposite. Uh, APC uh, consumes lots of memory to store the the opcode. Okay, so know, uh, know this. And that's it. I think we have uh, five minutes, something like that, for questions, so it's, uh, it's good. Uh, I have not uh, detailed uh, things about uh, references, etc., because it can be very, very tricky, very, very complex, and it, it uses uh, more time, so I put uh, references in an article you can find on my page. It's French written, but you can use, I use a very nice French so that a translator, a translator can translate it back to English. Uh, I have a project to translate all those articles in English, but that's very, very time consuming and I have no time actually to translate that. But uh, Google does that or another thing <laughs> does that uh, like uh, very nice. <laughs>